Welcome back to the Graham Stephan Show. My name is Graham and welcome to my show. And today we got a really special episode today. It's living on 80K a year in Los Angeles. Wait for it. Millennial money. Ooh. And this is one of the episodes, by the way. This is one that got me upset. Normally, I why. <laughs> normally with millennial money, recently it's just been really good. And I've been angry because, like, Alex Sanchez came on and there's, like, there's nothing you could say bad about the yeah. guy. Like, he's doing everything he's doing really well. so correctly that sometimes I get upset because it's like, well, what, what, what am I supposed to say? I'm just supposed to have him on the show and then, like, just nothing. You, on the other hand. Me. we got a bone to pick <laughs> with you. So I don't even know where to begin. You are doing a lot right. One of the things that I liked, let's start with what I liked about your okay. episode. One of the things that I liked is that you worked very hard. Yeah. And it seems like throughout college, you, you were taking on jobs, and you graduated with no debt. Yeah, correct. So that was phenomenal. So what was that like? So honestly, everyone says, like, when you go to college, like, you're going to have the best four years of your life. You're going to go to all the frat parties, all the games, all of the Greek life, and all of the great stuff that happens, especially at UCLA. Being in LA, it's such, like, an amazing campus feel. But I was literally grinding. I, at one point, had two jobs. I worked at Starbucks. I did the opening shift. You worked at Starbucks? I did. Did you not say that in Millennium I did Money? not. Wow. I did not. I worked at Starbucks for a year and then I quit. <laughs> what was that like? It was tough. I was doing the opening shift so I can get to class by 10 a.m. So I would be there at 4.30, open up. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was brutal. And then I had an on-campus job. So mm. I had two jobs because with work study, you can only work a certain amount of hours as a student. So to get extra income, I had to find like a job outside. I also did, did like research and I try to find ways to save money and be able to pay for school. So it, honestly, I didn't really enjoy my four years. I think I only went to like maybe three football games mm -hmm. and that's about it. Like my entire four years at UCLA. Right. Well, I never went yeah. to a college football game <laughs> ever in my entire life. I have never done that. I think maybe I've been to a few college parties ever. Yeah, I. That's not my vibe. So I, I just it. like stayed away from that, and yeah. I just worked through throughout school. And that's incredible. Yeah, I actually landed my current job my last year at UCLA. I was like one of the only people from like my group of friends mm -hmm. who had a like a job lined up. I was on like salary, stock plan, all of that by like twenty. That's amazing. Yeah. And yeah. what was it like though getting up at four thirty? Why? Why so early? Why I've not always go, like, done, really late? I've always like I always shoot myself on the foot because I do all of these things. I overextend myself all the time. Um, but 4 a.m. was the only time where I was able to work out like off campus and yeah. then go to class and then work my actual campus job after class. So that was the only time that I really had for myself to work off site. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. Again, graduating without debt. Yeah, it was tough, you know? Yeah. Uh, not fun. Um, but then you decided to put yourself in debt. Thank you, Graham. <laughs> yes, into debt. Okay, correct. so let's explain this. What went through your mind when okay, so the BMW? This is the part that everyone wants to. This is the part that everyone to, wants to. Yeah. Okay, so. I'm going to put an ad break right here. <laughs> <laughs> so before driving the BMW, I had a Fiat that I bought from CarMax. Great. Okay, Car I only owed like $4,000 to like pay off the car. Hey. And then, you know, I realized that I wasn't happy with the car. I mean, it was Why? Great. Why weren't you happy with the Fiat? Because, okay, so I work for an auto company, auto tech company, and, like, I'd see nice cars all the time. And I've always wanted a BMW since I was in high school. I was like, okay, BMW is, like, you said, it's a Honda of LA. Like, they're right. basic okay. cars, right? Yeah. But that's a car that I've always wanted to have. So when I got my promotion and I got all these other things like squared away, I decided that I wanted to get myself a nice present as a graduation present for myself. And that's why I got the BMW. And everything lined up perfectly. Like the APR was great. Um, the monthly at the time worked well because I was living at home. Mm -hmm. Then I moved out. Did you not think that you I'm, were going to be moving out or was it just no, like a, you didn't? No, I didn't know okay. I was going to find a boyfriend. Oh. <laughs> You couldn't, you couldn't live at home and still have a boyfriend? Um, I think I wanted to, like, experience what it would be like to live with a person. Okay. And so I decided to move out of my... And now I regret it. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> I don't, is, is he going to be watching this? And no, like, but he knows. Like, I regret it in the sense I miss my parents. You know, I okay. miss being at home. You know, okay. like... Ouch. Gee, I don't know if you want this out there. If he's going to see this. No, he's going to be fine. No, okay. he knows. Like, he, like the struggle is real. Yeah. Like, we both... Like, he knows. I tell him every night. <laughs> that I, I regret, regret this. moving... <laughs> I'm just kidding. You can um, always sleep in your car. That's true, right? <laughs> <laughs> that would be my rent payment. Jeez. Okay, so you got the car. 
Uh, what is the APR on the car? It's uh, two point. I refinance it. Refinance it is two point eighty nine. Not, that's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. So it like at first it was like three point like high threes or okay. something, and then yeah. I refined it to two point eighty nine. Okay. Um. So now I'm making a slightly higher monthly payment, but I'm also my loan term is much smaller. Okay. But the the regardless, the point is I'm gonna pay this car off at the end of the year. Like even if I. Why? Because I don't know if I'm gonna get. Well, I know I'm gonna go to business school. It depends on where I end up, East Coast or here. Why so, business school? Why There's so many school? questions. I know, so what many we, questions. Okay. Okay, let's start with why. Let's why start with the business? BMW. Okay, BMW. No, no, the BMW, because okay. we're on the subject of BMW. So at, at the, the moral of the story is I'm going to pay off the car at the end of the year because I just don't want to have to make those monthly payments and I'm kind of tired of it. I have the money, so I have 25K in a high interest savings account. I have over 100K in a stock market with, combined with like my stock plan, my personal money, my Roth IRA. Congratulations, yeah. that's impressive. So like, if I really wanted to pay it off, I could just take what's in the high interest savings account and some of the stock stuff, pay that off. If I really wanted to, but I'm making the monthly payments, whatever's remaining at the end of 2020, I'm just gonna cash in some profits and pay for the car. That's like my okay. my thought process. The other option is to sell the car. The other option, correct, but I ran the numbers and the highest that I can get for this car is like 20K. That's if I'm like lucky. And I owe $30,000. Ooh. So that means that if I, let's say I sell for 20, I have to pay BMW 10K, and then I have to get a reliable used car, which can run from seven to $12,000, depending what car I get. So it's like, I'm gonna get myself in the same situation with a much, n not as nice w car. I don't know if you would though, because let's say the car right now, okay. you'd be able to get 18. Let's just say- Okay, 18, just, you, worst case someone, someone pays you 18,000 yeah. for the car. Um, another few years, it's gonna be worth what? 14, 15? Yeah. Probably. The car only has like 47,000 miles too. So it's like in really good condition. By the way, if anyone wants to buy it. <laughs> but why <laughs> not Why not sell that car and get a used Prius? Because you can get a pretty decent used Prius between eight to $12,000. So my cost would be $18,000 technically. No. No, because the money be like... is already lost. You already lost the money. Yeah. So it's not really a cost anymore because the money's already gone. Yeah. It's just, you have a car that's now worth a lot less. So regardless, I mean, the money's not coming back in that yeah. car. It's not like the car is going to go up in value. Yeah. So it's really not costing you anything. You're profiting the difference. What if I just get a Tesla? You could leverage a Tesla yeah. and to make some content. I mean, I, you know? I work there. I should probably get you one. You could. Yeah. So I I don't know. If it were me right now, what I would do is yeah. sell the BMW, get a used Prius for a while to save the difference, and then maybe another year or so get yeah. yourself a Tesla in a few years, yeah. or just go and get the Tesla. Otherwise, I think you're sinking so much money into yeah. a car that's just, it, it's... But then my also my logic is like, I'm gonna drive this car until like the, until the ground. Why business school? Why business school? So, I work for a tech company. My career goal and path is to do something in clean tech. So for me, getting a business degree and working at like a big four uh, firm, consulting firm, is like my objective. Um, just with my experience and I like, like I know there are so many people out there we're all about like entrepreneurship and like all these things you can do and I love that. But for me, I'm like a student at heart and I love to learn, I love to be in a class environment. Um, for me, business school is like the next step for to elevate my career. Have you looked into how much that's going to cost you versus uh, your, how yes, much you're going to Yes, it's very make? expensive. Yeah. Uh, but and then we're talking about an MBA, correct? An MBA, correct. Okay. And that's a two-year program. Um, if we're talking about one of the M7 schools like Harvard, Wharton, MIT, like all of these, Yale, like it's a lot of money. But there's funding purpose. Like if you get a really good GMAT score, you can get like lots of funding for okay. your MBA. So what do you think your out-of-pocket cost is going to be? Probably, um, I would say maybe like 80 with funding. 80,000. Maybe way. like 80. Do you think, do you think you're going to get funding? Yeah, okay. I think I'm going to get pretty funding. Pretty confident. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I got funding for undergrad. I feel like I right. could get funding. Okay. For so MBA. $80,000. $80, yeah. Can you work during those two years? Um, You can work during the summer only. They like place you in So a, it's not just 80K. It's okay. So it's 80K minus. You're making whatever 80K I'm making, a year. Yeah. So let's say 160,000 because let's, yeah. let's call it working summers. You're not going to make a lot of money. Right on a place just working a summer. Correct. Unless you're doing like a Starbucks. I don't know how that works. So it's really- I'm not gonna work at Starbucks as an <laughs> MBA student. So you never know, I, you know. <laughs> you think, you think, I don't know. I don't know, it's like you get experience at Starbucks. I don't know. Ignore that, ignore that. Anyway, cut, cut that. <laughs>
160 grand mm-hmm. is how much you're losing out on. Correct. Right. Because I'm not going to earn the 80K. Right. Or actually, let's say this. It's not, it's 80,000 before taxes. Correct. Right. So how much it, let's call it 55. Where, yeah. So it's really 110,000 plus 80. It's $190,000 over two, two years. years is how much that's, that MBA is really going yes. to be costing you. How much more are you going to be making to make that back? Anywhere from like high 150 and above, depending on what consulting firm I go to, plus a sign-on bonus, which is anywhere between 25 and like 40, depending on which firm you get hired. Okay. So like when you sign on to a M uh, to a four big four firm, there's a pretty big sign-on bonus plus your start like starting salary at like 150. Got it. But if you get into like a, if you come from a really good MBA school. Yeah, so you're going from 80 to 150, which 150 is really more like, let's call it 110. So an extra, let's call it 45,000 mm-hmm. a year. So that's going to take you about five years to pay off, assuming you save the difference. Assuming that I also, well, well don't forget about the investment. That's your break even. Your, yeah. Well, your break even yeah. from how much money yeah. you've spent versus the time off work is going to take you five years. If, being on that path just to break even, and then anything else after that becomes yeah. your profit. Five years. When you, I don't when, know. You, when, you, when you put things like that, Graham, it makes it so seem like I shouldn't go to business it's school. Down <laughs> I don't know. I really, My, I don't know. I feel like it's like it's it's a good. It's not a route for everyone. I agree. Yeah, I think the connections you make at business school, like let's say I get into Harvard, like things are just. It, it's it's all about how you use your MBA and how you are able to leverage that for whatever career path you want to take. I agree. Um, but yeah, it's definitely not for everyone. I agree. Because with you're that. losing on salary for like two years. Yes. Yeah. I have just been so anti-school. Yeah, I, guess. I know. Just because yeah. I've seen what people can do without an education. Yeah, you can do and I'm so just much. Like, what is the point of an education now? Like yeah. even with your YouTube channel, yeah. I have a feeling. I'll, I'll, I'll link to it, by the way, everyone. Just go, just go subscribe, like, comment, do all that normal good jazz there. Thank you, Graham. But, uh, <laughs> but like, leveraging the YouTube channel, yeah. you can make so much more money. Now, I know it's, it's I know. way riskier, and who knows what the algorithm might do tomorrow. And that's why I'm kind of doing it now, and right. it's just seeing, like, you know, what's going to happen. I feel like, yeah. for me, school is always going to be important. That's just, that's just the way I am. But, like, I'm also doing things outside of that to like bring extra sources of income, still hustling. I just feel like at this moment, if you were to double, if you were to spend those two years, let's just say, and double down on YouTube, because there aren't that many females in the space. My channel, everyone's on this like entrepreneurship road track. And like, I want to show them like what's possible with doing your hustling and going to school and like taking you on my journey, which is very different from what everyone else is doing. And I feel like for those who find value in education, like they can see I could be a role model and show them like, okay, well, she's able to go to like an M7 school. She has an investment portfolio. She works for Tesla, like balancing and showing that. Yes. Sticking. Yes. From a YouTube perspective, that's a lot less relatable. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna appeal to much fewer people because they're gonna see oh you, you, the MBA yeah. your top school you know all those work I, I don't want to do that and, and they're not even gonna give it a chance and yeah. that's why I've tried to implement a lot of humor in my videos and make it kind of fun and yeah. like really lighthearted and it makes it a lot more welcoming for people to get into personal finance but again I, I yeah. think you know whatever you want to do is it's up to you yeah. it's just you want to appeal usually to as large of an audience as possible audience, and yeah. just going for a, a a female demographic let's just say yeah. or something that's you know that more women can relate to i think mm-hmm. would be helpful on a, on a broader scale i don't know i just want to show like different aspects of my life mm-hmm. and like and, and well my youtube channel honestly it, it just focuses on my investing journey i really don't share any personal stuff yeah you should e- I should? Yeah, you should. Oh, okay. Say how much you regret moving out of moving oh my out God. of home and like how much you regret <laughs> to be able to... No, seriously, I found that the more personal things you share, yeah. the better the connection with the audience. Yeah. So people really get to know you outside of just investing because I feel like investing is just one component, but yeah. the psychological aspect uh, is just as equally as, as big. Yeah. So we'll see. I don't know, but we'll see how the channel yeah. evolves over time. I feel like I'm just like easing my way into it, right. but share personal details. I'm going to tell you oh, that that for me is what what's made the biggest difference. Yeah. Now, are you still waking up at like 4 a.m.? I don't do that now after I had my surgery and like, it's like, I don't have an organ in my body. Technically, like I just can't put my body. What do you mean that. you don't have an organ in it's your like body? It's like the thyroid gland. It's oh. an organ. Yeah. It was removed. Wow. Yeah. Oh gee. I didn't even, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I had that in October and after I had surgery um, for the cancer, the tumor, mm. I had to take the whole thing out yeah. just to be safe. 
Um, I just decided to put my resignation resignation letter because I just didn't want to put myself through that anymore. Right. Yeah. Now, does that change your perspective on things to have to I, go through that? I mean, what was what was that like? I know this is totally off, off subject, yeah. but now I'm, I'm curious. So I've always been a person, like, I try to find balance, like, I don't really spend on other things. I've always been pretty good with money in terms of saving money. That's why I started investing because I had so much money saved. I'm like, okay, well, it's not growing. Um, life is so precious. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. And for me, like, I want to live every day and be impactful, have a purpose, but enjoy the present. I don't want to be stuck in trying to figure out what's going to happen to me in five years, ten years from now. I still want to have a plan, like a financial plan, uh, goal setting, but I want to live to the fullest today because this is the only, today is the only thing that's guaranteed tomorrow we don't know yeah um so for me after going through surgery and like getting getting diagnosed with cancer at such a young age i realized that um you just gotta enjoy the present yeah so the last thing i want to say you guys is like life is very precious and don't overdo yourself and try to like trying to figure out what's going to be your next step five years from now because we don't know what can happen live for the moment have a plan have a goal find balance and that's really going to help you um you know be on a track to success but you don't have to overdo it all the time i feel like that's my message like don't overdo it all the time find balance that's the most important thing be happy with what you have um and don't compare yourself to anyone you're on your own specific track everyone's i'm on mine graham is on his and just enjoy what you have Words of wisdom there. Yeah. And overall, I got to say, you know, your episode was, it was good. You were doing a lot of things right. There's a lot of, you know, pros here. You honestly really have a phenomenal work ethic when it comes to pretty much anything you do. Not a fan of the BMW. Not a fan of business school. Not a fan of business school. (laughs) I think uh, neither of them are required and necessary. But again, to each their own. I'd say, I, now I've, I've said it and, it and it's out there yeah. and if, if someone wants to pick it up they can pick yeah. it up if they don't if they, if they want to leave it there that, that's fine too Yeah. but that would be my advice so anyway you guys thank you so much for watching I really appreciate it Wendy thank you so much for coming on thank the you, Graham Stephan Show and letting me confront you this morning so anyway with that said you guys thank you so much for watching make sure to smash the like button and subscribe, subscribe. and <laughs> notification bell and, I'm <laughs> such a new. And, I'm such a new. Okay. And add me on Instagram. I post it pretty much daily. So if you want to be a part of it there, feel free to add me there. And lastly, if you guys want two free stocks, did you get your two free stocks? Weeble. Weeble. Get two free stocks <laughs> down below in the description when you deposit $100 on the platform. One of those stocks, by the way, right now could be valued up to $1,400. Anyway, you need your two free stocks and so do you watching this. So thank you so much for watching and until next time. Yes.